What if I told you we just found the most distant star ever observed? And then what's highlighted by that white arrow is the lens star Arendel, which is the most distant star that's been observed so far. So we're seeing this entire galaxy as it was uh, about 13 billion years ago. However, Arendel doesn't lie a mere 13 billion light years away from us. Because the universe has been expanding at an accelerating rate since the Big Bang, the star now lives a whopping 28 billion light years from Earth. Okay, so it's far. Why is that so important? And why is it a game changer for our understanding of the cosmos? Watch till the end of this video and you'll know why Arendel might be the key to unlocking the mysteries of the early universe. This star was shining when the universe woke up around 900 million years after the Big Bang. If the Big Bang theory holds water, this star is a relic from the universe's early days. A cosmic grandparent, if you will. And because of that, Arendelle might belong to a super rare group of stars that astronomers have been hunting down for over 50 years. I think the biggest reason is that we know that the, the universe within the first billion years looks very different than the universe that we see nearby today. So from what we've seen from galaxies, observation of galaxies, we know that these galaxies look a lot different than the Milky Way. They're not these you know big, beautiful spirals. They're sort of clumpy, irregular, just barely starting to form. Imagine the universe as a newborn baby right after the Big Bang. Kind of like it had its first cosmic birthday party. During this early stage, the universe was expanding and cooling down. And it was pretty much made up of hydrogen and helium. Now here's where it gets super cool. The very first stars, known as Population 3 stars, were born from this primordial mix of gases. And these are going to be things that are going to be too faint for even the James Webb Space Telescope to discover without the, the benefit of gravitational lensing. Arendelle's big debut might just be our cosmic peak into the very first stars ever. By studying these ancient stars known as Population 3 stars, scientists hope to crack the code on what these ancient stars were like. They want to piece together how the universe transformed from a simple hydrogen and helium smoothie to the rich element-filled cosmos we see today. Which is why studying this epoch of reionization is so important. Basically, when we figure out how hydrogen switched its state across the universe, we could begin to understand the process that powered that whole transformation of our universe. Since spotting these ancient stars is like finding a needle in a cosmic haystack, scientists have relied on their spectral signatures, the cosmic fingerprints in the light they gave off. And with these observations, they hope to develop theories about how the universe's first stars came into existence thereby potentially challenging or upholding the long-standing Big Bang theory. Whatever the case may be, Arendelle may just be the key to figuring it all out. But before we get lost in space here, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want us to keep you up to date on any further developments here. Now that we know how important this discovery is, how exactly did they manage to spot Arendelle? Well, stick around because we'll break it down. The discovery of Arendelle was made possible by the RELICS program, or the Rayonization Lensing Cluster Survey, a Hubble and Spitzer Space Telescope program that studies massive galaxy clusters. This program uses telescopes to peer into galaxies from the early universe, especially those from the first billion years after the Big Bang. Arendelle was found using something called gravitational lensing, a phenomenon predicted by Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. And let me tell you, gravitational lensing is like the ultimate cosmic magnifying glass. Imagine a massive galaxy cluster that's so heavy, it warps space-time around it. When light passes by, it gets bent, creating a sort of cosmic lens. This lens lets us see distant objects that would otherwise be invisible. Thanks to this, we can study stars billions of light years away. And sometimes this lensing effect creates multiple images of the same object, making it look like arcs or rings in the sky. We know that the star itself is quite massive, so we can say based on the brightness that it's 
at least 50 times the mass of the sun and that it's going to be at least a million times brighter than the sun. So it's a really big, really massive star. Yeah, Arundel is like the ultimate space flashlight. But here's the kicker. It burned out quickly, probably only living for a few million years. That's super short <laughs> compared to most stars. But its discovery has already shaken up what we know about the universe. And it all started with the Hubble telescope, which gave us our first glimpse of Arundel. Dr. Patty Boyd from NASA's Exoplanets and Stellar Astrophysics Laboratory said it best. Is it actually contains an image of a single star whose light left that object when the universe itself was less than a billion years old. Now, the fine folks at the Space Telescope Science Institute, Johns Hopkins University, Stockholm University and the University of California, Davis, were all over this and they published a mind-boggling article on March 30th, 2022, titled A Highly Magnified Star at Redshift 6.2. Sounds fancy, but here's the deal. This star was blown up in our view by a galaxy cluster acting like a giant magnifying glass, making it possible for us to check out Arundel in a way we've never seen before. Fast forward a few months, and along comes the JWST, which is basically the Hubble telescope's cooler. Younger sibling with way better eyesight. JWST decided to look closer at Arundel with its super sensitive infrared mirror. And guess what? It didn't disappoint. Webb started spilling tea on Arundel's brightness, temperature, and the company it keeps in its home galaxy, the Sunrise Arc. But wait, how does this whole JWST thing even work? The main player here is the near infrared camera, or NIR cam. Think of near cam as JWST's ultra cool Instagram filter. Only instead of adding dog ears, it captures jaw dropping, high res, grayscale images. It doesn't just snap one pic either. It grabs a bunch through different filters and then combines them to create one colorful masterpiece. Kind of like your artsy friend who spends hours editing a single photo. Near cam's two modules work together to capture these stunning images. They can even switch things up with a prism to spread light into a spectrum, allowing scientists to see every little detail of what's out there. Oh, and it also keeps an eye on the slight changes in a star's brightness over time. No biggie. When astronomers look closely at Arundel, they found that it might be a B-type giant star. Translation, this baby is hot, like 23,432 to 28,832 degrees Fahrenheit hot. That's over twice as scorching as our sun. The JWST confirmed that Arundel is not just a glowing ember in the universe. Nope, it's shining way brighter than our sun ever could. But Arundel's life is probably shorter than our sun's, burning out after just 10 to 100 million years compared to the sun's 10 billion year marathon. That's because it's main sequence lifetime. The time when it's all about fusing hydrogen and just hanging out wraps up pretty fast. Now, when you think you've got Arundel all figured out, another theory comes along. What if it's not a B-type giant, but a luminous blue variable star? Sounds fancy, right? Basically, LBVs are rare, massive and evolved stars that tend to have unpredictable outbursts. This discovery is shaking up what we thought we knew about the universe's timeline. Trust me, if you like this video, you don't want to miss it.